Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it anywhere and everywhere. You can even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can go ahead and distribute your podcast to Spotify and anywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take the conversation with your fans to the next level, Q&A polls are the best way to get them talking. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. We've been using Spotify for Podcasters and we highly recommend you give it a try. Download Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters and get started. Hey guys, welcome back to That So Fringy Podcast. Um, this is our part two of the Zachary King episode, the interview with the ex-Satanist. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the last episode. Um, it, we know it was heavy, but uh, we're glad that uh, we're able to kind of pull back the curtains and, and look behind uh, what goes on in these uh, deep recesses uh, of our culture Unfortunately, um, in order to know that this stuff is happening, you have to acknowledge it. You mm-hmm. have to pay attention to it and acknowledge it. And, 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 and by putting your head in the sand and not paying attention to it going on around you, what kind of Christian are we really being? You know what I mean? Right. So. No, I agree. So in this part two, we kind of, he goes into a little bit more of, you know, how he was saved out of that life and how, you know, there, there's victory in Jesus. You know, he ended up finding his way out, and you know, it's it's pretty amazing that God can pull you out of anything, really. Yeah. You know, you're never too far gone. You're never, you know, this guy participated in a lot of really bad things, and he really has a heart for the abortion industry, and um, he knows what it's for, and he's been trying to tell people what it's for, and and you know bring some light to that, which is important because I think a lot of people we know it happens, but we don't we don't know the why, and this is a lot of the why. So yeah, again, it's a really heavy topic, and again, it's this you know part two is going to be a little bit more of the adult content. So if you have little ones or you know, if you're really sensitive or feel like you're going to be triggered by these kinds of things, just, you know, use your discernment on on this episode. Yeah. And lastly, we just wanted to say that, um, you know, we've been in prayer about, um, you know, whether this is what God wants us to do as a podcast. And, you know, we're 35 episodes in now mm-hmm. and uh, we're getting lots of great feedback. We're feeling like um, the Holy Spirit is leading and uh, people are, are waking up and this message is reaching a lot of people. I mean, we're seeing what 40 something different countries mm-hmm. that are that are listening, uh, at least one person listening from 40 something different countries. And so that's pretty exciting to know that your message is going out that far but we wanted to start a gofundme uh for you know the purposes of um building this or continuing to build this platform this podcast uh into something bigger and uh you know we we would like to incorporate video we would like to do um you know maybe some online um uh, Q and A's and stuff like that in the future. But you know, the, the thing that limits that is just resources. And, um, there's a little blurb on the, uh, link that, uh, we're going to provide in the show notes. If you go to that GoFundMe page, um, you can read what, um, I wrote earlier today. And, uh, 
basically what we're asking is that if the Holy Spirit's laying it on your heart to give to our mission, um, then great. And if he's not, then then don't, please. So with that, um, we're going to get you into the episode, and we hope that you enjoy part two with Zachary King. So let's get into it. Stay fringy, my friends. So, going back though, me being 14, did this abortion, then I turned 15. When I was turning 18, I was graduating from high school and I was going off to college and I thought, how am I going to find a satanic coven now? It's not like they're going to advertise it in the town square. And back then, the only way to find a satanic coven you could either go to some laundromats and they would have like a little uh, cork board where people would advertise different stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you went to the right one, you'd find a piece of paper on there advertising a coven meeting. Right. Or the best place to go was in like an adult bookstore. If you find the local swingers magazine, In the back of it is ads for coven meetings. Hmm. But, I mean, do you really want to go there? I mean, that's sketchy. Yeah. (laughs) It was like, you're going to see things you don't want to see. Yeah. And it might even be live action. You really don't want to see that. Swinging around us. (laughs) Right. You know, so uh, I was like, you know, I don't know what to do. And, but, you know, I found my first satanic coven. Because on Wednesday is the day that the school opened for the first time. And on Wednesdays is the student union is open. And they had the Baptist and the Catholic student union, the Republican, the Democrat, and the Monarchy Party student union, the Satanic and the Wiccan student union. All right. So I tried going to that Satanic coven. Let's see what happens. Now, this is a bunch of kids away from home for the first time with no adult supervision. And they think Satanism is all about getting drunk, getting high, having sex. I've been doing that since I was 12. And they make up magic spells on the spot. Like, I'm going to take this beer, open it, wave it around my head three times, take a drink, slam it down, Throw the can, and if it makes it in that trash can over there, I'm going to win $1,000 somewhere. (laughs) That is not a magic spell, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) And all their magic spells were done like that. We're going to play a game of quarters, and if you can make 12 quarters in a row go in that thing, you're going to get laid tonight. Okay, great. (laughs) So I called my first coven, and I was like, Look, I read some books, and it mentioned a place called Bohemian Grove. I don't know if it's real or not, but it also mentioned the Illuminati, and it mentioned satanic covens that were out to rule the world. Hmm. And these guys that I found is not that coven. I want that coven. Yeah. Do you know who that is? And they said they're called Satan's World Church or World Church of Satan. Two different names, same coven. Here's the phone number. Call that. Tell them who you are, what you did, and they can take care of you. So I called this number, left a message. They called me back, and I told them um, I was with the OTO. This is where I used to be. This was my position. They told me that you guys are what I'm looking for. They gave me an address, and they said, you're probably going to have to park, depending on how late you get there, between one and three miles away, because it's pretty packed. You've got a big parking lot, but it will fill up really quick. All right. So I show up. I drive all the way up to the building, and then I start backing away from the building, and I had to drive about a mile away to find a place to park. 
and walk back. The building is bigger than a super Walmart. And it is bumping from outside. You can hear the music. And I go inside. They said that I had to show them my ID. So I showed them that and walked in the door. There's over 10,000 people in this building. Mm. There's a section for food and different types of food. Mm. There's a section for booze. But there's also soda and water. Uh, There's drugs. Pretty much any drug you would want is there. And then there's groups that are dancing. There's a band, uh, a live band. There's people dancing. There's people just talking. There's people sitting on couches, chilling. And there's also a group of people in the corner having sex. Out in the open, everybody can watch. Although I will tell you that it's been my experience that people that are willing to get naked in public are people you would not want to see naked in public. (laughs) It was the same thing about these people having sex in public. It was like, oh, okay. (laughs) Good thing it's in the corner. Keep it over there. (laughs) Can we get some curtains up? Give them privacy. Yes. uh, It's not that I don't want to see them. Oh, no. (laughs) They want, they need privacy. So, But I'm walking through this building. Now, let's go back to a sleepover I was at when I was 13. This is the lie that I caught my coven in. One night, I'm at a sleepover. I wake up about 3 in the morning, go to the bathroom and get some water. And as I'm walking through the house, I see this guy. He looks like he's wearing a tuxedo and a top hat. He's carrying a wand in his hands. And he's got corpse paint on his face. He looks like a member of of KISS wearing a tuxedo. And he's walked through, he sees me, and he winks at me, and keeps going. And I thought, that is the coolest look ever. (laughs) I don't know what that is, but I want to (laughs) know. So the next day when I got up, I told my coven, hey, who is this guy? I saw him last night. And they said, you didn't see that. You dreamt that. You didn't see any. There was nobody here. Nothing happens. And I thought, oh, so now you guys are going to lie to me, too. Yeah. My Baptist preacher lies to me. My parents lie to me. Now you're lying to me. All right, well, I'll just store that away. One day I'll find out. So one day happened when I was 18 at this other coven meeting. And I see this guy. Not the same guy, but the same look. And he's walking through this party. And I grabbed this guy next to me. And I said, who is that? What is that? How can I do that? And he said, well, who ran your coven? I said, we had a really big coven. We had 120 to 150 members at any given time. We were run by 13 high priests and priestesses. And then we had... um, the main magic practitioner was called a mage. Uh, everybody wore a black robe with a red inverted pentagram, except the mage. And he wore a red robe with a black inverted pentagram. And I was a mage. And he said, oh, he says, well, our coven has 1.1 million members worldwide. And we're run by a CEO and board of directors. And that guy you saw is a high wizard. He does the official magic of the coven. And I was like, that is awesome. How can I be the high wizard? And the guy says, well, all I know is that the devil handpicks the high wizard. I was like, all right, so then how do I become the high wizard? He said, you got to get the devil's attention. He says, I don't know how you do that. But that's what you have to do. Well, that I knew. I'd been doing abortions for a few years. And I know that abortion gets the devil's attention. So if I got in with the group here that does abortions, and I could do a few, I could get the devil's attention. 
And then I just need to let it be known that I want to be the high wizard. So I said about, I did about five or six more abortions. And then I was turning 21 soon. And I got this notice in the mail that I was being called before the CEO and board of directors. Yeah. But I didn't equate this with I was being chosen to be a high wizard. Because a lot of people get chosen and then they're never seen or heard from again. So I was kind of worried about what might happen. What have I done? So I show up and I'm ready to go. I'm ready for action. I don't know why I'm there. They invite me into this room. On one side of the room is just a blank wall and there's a big plush leather chair there. On the other side of the room is another wall with a big black curtain on it and an easel with some stuff on it, but I don't, I can't see what that is. That's also covered. And they hand me a handbook and it says high wizard handbook. And they told me I was chosen to be the next high wizard. And I asked, how was I chosen? And they didn't say anything. So on the cover of this book is a high wizard, but it's hand drawn. And I open that book up and it says, no one can tell you what to do. And I thought, this is the job for me. <laughs> no one can tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah. I'm all in. Then they pull this long um, string or rope and the curtain slides out of the way. And there's about nine costumes on the wall and it's different looks for the high wizard. Now, if you go on YouTube and look up pink, like a pill official video, she has a high wizard in her video four times. The third and fourth time you see him, he's conducting a magic spell. Also, if you wonder, does pink really know who this guy is? If you look up another picture of pink high wizard red carpet, there's a picture of pink on the red carpet standing next to a high wizard. Mm. Huh. So apparently she knows him on some level. Sure. Yeah. So they asked me if I wanted the job. I hear that nobody's ever turned down the job. You know, and I, I was like, absolutely. I'll take this. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. So I customized my costume. I did an 18th century style tuxedo, top hat, corpse paint on my face, except that I would use colors. I used a lot of black and white, but I also would customize it and add some color to my costume somewhere and then add those same colors on my face and then wore Harley Davidson slouch boots because I thought they looked cool. <laughs> I was all about looking cool. Yeah. Um. Nobody knows the I Wizard's real name. The CEO and board of directors do, but nobody else does. So I kept my name from when I was in porn. So everybody thought my name was Tommy. And I did this. I mean, I thought I was going to do this for the rest of my life. Now, included in the things that I did was that I split Baptist churches and I made rock stars. Hmm. I made between 1987 and 1999, I made approximately 1,200 rock stars. Wow. wow. If you were, if you got famous during that time, you probably signed with me. Now, if you were already famous, you signed with a different eye wizard. And how I knew who signed and who didn't was that every 90 days, we were given a sheet of every place we're going to be for the next 90 days. And for the next 90 days, these are all the bands that are going to be where you're going to be. Who do you want to go see? Because all the bands on here 
our bands that have signed, what we do is that we get you to sign your soul to the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. And then they make you a rock star. You have to do everything that they say. They'll make you famous. There's no doubt they'll make you famous. But you've just sold your soul to the devil. Right. You know, which the reality of what you've done is that you've given your will to the devil. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is give your will back to God. But most people don't know that. They think they've legitimately sold it. Sure. So I would go to what's called a warehouse deal in either Hollywood or L.A. It's a giant warehouse. And all these bands are rock stars. One of you rock stars have been told by their publicist, their director, their producer, friend, agent, somebody, if you want to be a rock star, this is where you have to go. Then I show up with an entourage. My entourage keeps track of everybody that I talk to hmm. and the people that get rejected. If you're rejected, you're told you can't apply again for six months. So I go through this room and I ask, and it's a bunch of booths and stalls. And so some bands have set up all their equipment. I don't want to hear you play. I, I don't need to know anything. I just need to ask you some questions. Hmm. Who wants to be famous? Everybody raise their hand. Everybody wants to be famous. What are you willing to do to be famous? And this is where some people draw a line in the sand. You know, like people will say things like, I would do anything, but nothing with kids and nothing with animals. Well, that's not who Satan wants. Yeah. Yeah. Satan wants the person that's willing to jump in the mud and be drugged through it. Yeah. So if you say nothing with kids or animals, I keep going. And you're put on the reject list. And you're told by my, my people that are with me, you can apply again in six months but not between now and then, hmm. you know, and if you try to apply within that six month period, you won't be allowed to apply again ever. So, you know, this is your one chance of fame and you blew it, but you can try it again, in, say seven months hmm. and you might make it that time. Next time, say you'll do anything. So, and some people have morals. They, they won't try anything. Mm -hmm. Some people never become rock stars because they won't take that leap. Yeah. So, but I mean, there was a guy at one of these things that was a little overweight, couldn't sing or dance, couldn't write a song, couldn't write poetry. For some reason in this building was a Dr. Seuss book. I gave him that and I said, read me that. And he started reading me the Dr. Seuss book. And just before it rhymed, he closed it and said, I don't get it. So he couldn't even make a Dr. Seuss book rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he would do anything. And I said, give me a scenario of anything you would do. And he says, if you took me to a room that had a little girl on the back of a horse... I would have sex with at least one of them. You're our boy. So I give him what's called a tier two card. Tier one is me. Tier two is this card. It's a white card with a black phone number on it with raised lettering. I say, you call the number on this card, do whatever they tell you to do, which is going to be filmed or photographed. And I'll see you on MTV in three to six months. Within, definitely within six months, he was on MTV in one of the world's most famous boy bands at that time. Hmm. Singing and dancing. Two things he said he could not do. Hmm. So, and that was a regular occurrence. I mean, there were tons of people that were willing to sell their souls to be famous. Sure. I mean, even if you, if you look on YouTube now, you can find rock stars saying that they've done it. Mm -hmm. And it was before my time, but 
Bob Dylan's on 60 Minutes saying he sold his soul to the devil. Katy Perry's in an interview where she said her parents were evangelists, evangelists, evangelicals, that was it. And she wanted to be, she was a singer on tour with them. And she wanted to be the next Amy Grant. But she failed at that. So she sold her soul to the devil. Mm-hmm. We actually had um, a, a concert with her in our small town. We had like an outdoor and a field concert. And she came and was one of the people that sang as a Christian artist. And she, she was not real easy to work with, if I remember right. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, a documentary on Netflix called Gaga 5.2. And in the edits of that, she says that she was leaving this is before she was famous, when no one knew who she was. She had performed in a strip club one night, not as a stripper, just as a singer, but that's the venue they booked for. And she was walking out the back at the end of the set, and she was leaving the building, and this guy walked up to her and said that, if she was willing to, to get famous, she could sign a contract with him and she'd be a superstar. And she said, what do I have to do? You know, not believing him or anything. And he said, you agree to sell your soul to the Illuminati and I can make you a rock star. So she did it. Right. Everybody knows who Lady Gaga is. Mm -hmm. She is world famous. Her costumes are disgusting, but world famous. Yeah, mm -hmm. she has a good, she has a good voice. There's no denying that, and her songs are all hits. But she sold her soul to the Illuminati. Yeah, and once you do that, once you sell your soul to the Illuminati, I, I mean that's a lifetime contract. Am I wrong? It is, and if you decide that you'd like to get out, you're most likely going to be suicided out. Sure, so it's going to look like you killed yourself. But you were murdered. Yeah. You know, um, I think it was it Chester Bennington? Yes. And Chris Cornell? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, they were going to reveal the sex trafficking and the child abuse in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they made that public. And once they made it public, I think at least one of them was on tour. Yeah. And had an entire years planned out for themselves and committed suicide while they were on tour. Mm -hmm. And that was Chris Cornell. Yep. And then a few days later, the other one killed themselves. I mean, come on people. Yeah. yeah. You know, they didn't kill themselves. Both of them were ruled a suicide, but it's like, you know, it's ruled a suicide because the police are in the pockets of the Satanists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if they don't do that, then they'll be next. Yeah. You know, it's like every time that there's an actual reveal of something, somebody dies. Yeah. And it's under suspicious circumstances. You know, they, Joan Rivers was asked, will we ever have a gay president? And she said, we have a gay president right now. He's in the White House. Yeah. And Michelle Obama is really a man. She's transgender. Yeah. And everybody thought it was funny and laughed it off. And then a few days later, she had an elective surgery that was non-life-threatening, and she died. Yeah. It's like, really? Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. Yeah, coincidence, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. So how long so, were, you, were you practicing in that position? I thought, now, my first... Month as a high wizard, I had to go to Bohemian Grove. And to me, I got to go to Bohemian Grove. Mm -hmm. I got to experience this. It was like your Disneyland? Yeah, almost. My Disney World actually was um, New Orleans. Oh. New Orleans has so much magic in it. I had to wear an amulet that had a spell on it that made me invisible to the people there. Hmm. Wow. Because otherwise, they would all find me. I had so much magic on me that they could easily find me. Even if I was dressed like a regular person. Yeah. I would suddenly find myself surrounded by people 
and they want to know, are you the high wizard? Can you give us a spell? I can buy a spell. You know, and it's like, you can't afford me. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I ended up having to wear this amulet whenever I was there. But it was a awesome experience. You know, and but being at Bohemian Grove, finding out that it was real. Yeah. And this has been going on for 200 years. Sure. And no one knows. This was like finding out all over again that magic is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and and suddenly I know a secret that no one else knows. Or working with the Illuminati and finding out that they're real and the whole world doesn't know it. Yeah. Like they're operating almost in plain sight. They make rock stars. They pull the levers and push the buttons of all the political decisions around the world. And no one knows it. Mm-hmm. It's like, how are you doing this? How are people this dumb? Yeah, like you're you're right out in the public, mm-hmm. and no one sees you. And you know, just all the. I mean, I got to travel. I'm meeting with kings and queens and monarchs and diplomats, presidents, millionaires, billionaires, and and I'm doing spells for a lot of these people. These people hire my coven. They pay my. They negotiate with my coven for how much it'll cost, mm-hmm. and then I go do the spell. But I don't see the money for that. I mean, it's not a paid position, but I'm given things as perks. Like I never got to have my my Lamborghini Countach, but I was allowed. To, I was loaned a Lamborghini Diablo. And I drove that for some some years wow. and thought I was the coolest guy in the world. But I had other cars besides that. I stayed in mansions. Now, my real car was a Nissan Sentra. <laughs> and for a while, my apartment was in the ghetto in Tallahassee, Florida. I lived in Frenchtown, and Frenchtown is in the ghetto. And my real clothes were... Usually Metallica t-shirt and jeans or cutoffs, flip-flops. But when I was the High Wizard, I was wearing an Armani tuxedo and corpse paint on my face and driving a Lamborghini. You know, and I'm having a great time. You know, I'm leaving the, the mansion in the morning. Now, I don't live there. It's like my, that's like my hotel. Yeah. Now, sometimes I have to stay in a real hotel. And then I'm staying in the Ritz or a Hilton. But usually I got to stay in these mansions all around the world. And it was quite nice to have something like that. Sure. You know, Satan's all about using your illusion. So everybody that sees the High Wizard thinks that's his Lamborghini. Or they come visit you at your mansion in Calabasas. And they think this is your mansion. And it's not. I'm here three days out of the month. And I'm driving this car maybe nine or ten days out of the month. And the rest of the time, I'm driving my Nissan Sentra. But no one knows where I live. And they don't know who I really am under the costume and the makeup. Sure. So I equate having this job to working in a candy store. Not a candy store that's in a mall but a freestanding building, a giant building with tens of thousands of pieces of candy in it. And all that candy is all the sins that exist in the world. So on your first day as the manager of the candy store, you're wondering how long is it going to take you to try every piece of candy? Now, not the licorice because nobody wants that. (laughs) So there's some sins that are disgusting. You don't want to do those sins, but the sins you want to do. How about sins you've never done, but you're willing to try? How long will it take you to do all those sins? You know, after six months, you've done all the sins that you wanted to do. Hmm. And six months later, you've done the sins that you said you'd never do. Hmm. And after three years, you start noticing that your boss can't make any new sins. Why is there no new sins being created? Like, when you started, it was 10,000 sins to do. 
But in that three years, there's not 10,001. Hmm. And then suddenly, a new candy bar comes out. And you rush over to try that because it's a new candy bar, 10,000 pieces of candy, new candy bar. You rip it off the wall, you rip the wrapper off of it, and realize that it's a new wrapper, but it's the same candy bar. It just has a new look. Mm -hmm. Crack cocaine comes out. I'm going to be the first on my block to smoke it. And I am. And then after I smoke it, I realize, wait, this is still cocaine. (laughs) This is nothing new. (laughs) I'm still doing the same old drugs in just new ways. Yeah. So, you know, after five years, I noticed that my clothes all smell like the candy store. So I burn them, get new clothes. And they still smell like the candy store. My girlfriend smells like the candy store, so I dump her. Get a new girlfriend. She smells like the candy store. This job is tiring. You know, when I first got this job, I got to travel. I got to meet with people. I got to hang out with rock stars. I got to make rock stars. I got to party with actors. I got to talk to billionaires. Now, I have to travel. I have to practice magic. I have to get drunk. I have to take drugs. I have to have sex. I have to party with rock stars. I have to make rock stars. Abortions used to make me feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Now it's a chore. Now it's something I have to do. Seven years into this job, this job sucks. Yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. All I want to do is stay home. Can't I just stay home? Do I have to travel? I mean, you told me I don't have to do what I don't want to do. So why can't I just stay home and do nothing? Can't I just take a vacation? You know, and I knew that if I didn't want to do this job anymore, then there's only three ways to get out. I can commit suicide. I can die of natural causes. Or I can be murdered. In all three ways, I end up in hell. When I started, I wasn't sure hell was real. Now I've seen enough things that I know demons are real. And I know the devil is real. And if the devil is real, God is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And I don't want to go. So I decide I need to escape. But I'm not sure when the time will be right for that. And every once in a while when I'm thinking about escaping, somebody says something to me that makes me think they might be on to me. Hmm. So I have to start playing things really close to the chest and not reveal anything. So now that was at seven years in. Hmm. I worked for the Illuminati for 12 years. Hmm. And at 12 years, I'd had enough. Yeah. I couldn't do this anymore. So I plotted my escape. I plotted it for eight months. And then part of my escape routine, I, I had a, a bank account that had $87 million in it. Wow. But none of it was mine. It was showboat money. And I couldn't spend it. I couldn't spend it on what I wanted to. I could spend it on things the Satanic Coven wanted me to spend it on or make a showing of doing something. But nothing that I really wanted. So I couldn't steal that money. So I'd be stealing from the coven. But they also washed my account. So I had to slowly pilfer money out of my own account. So like, you know, I'd pay with my ATM card at the grocery store, and take out an extra $10. And I did that every time. Or buy something at the gas station, take out an extra 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. And it's not suspicious when you do that. Yeah, so I'm pilfering money out of that 
And anything that I can possibly sell, I'm doing that. And eventually, I make an, an appointment at a satanic doctor. And my appointment was for 5 p.m. that day. It was the last appointment of the day. And I jump on the highway, and I drive that way. And on my way there, I get up the nerve, and I just keep going. Mm. I don't get off on the right exit. And I go to a certain point, get off that exit, start driving on another road, heading out of town. And eventually I ran out of gas. And I pulled over on the side of the road, hitchhiked my way to the next town, sold my car for scrap, bought a Greyhound bus ticket. Now back then, you didn't need a passport to get into Canada. Hmm. So I caught a Greyhound bus ticket to Canada, and for some reason I got rejected at the border. And they said that I could go anywhere in the United States that Greyhound goes. So I opened up the United States Atlas, closed my eyes and just put my finger down. It landed on Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I got a bus to Tulsa, Oklahoma. When I got there, I lived off the grid for about a year, but back on the grid for about two years. And then I bought a car and I drove again to get into Canada. Now, by now, you needed a passport to get in. But there were some border crossings that you didn't need that. So I got rejected again. Now, I know you're thinking, why are you trying to get into Canada? Well, I had only done like two jobs in Canada as a Satanist. So I figured there weren't many Satanists there, Mm -hmm. and I could easily hide. I was afraid of being recognized. Now, if you look at Canada now, it seems like Satan's running Canada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, back then, not so much. So, I, um, I try and make it again, and I get rejected, and I'm heading back to Tulsa, and a friend calls me, asks me where I'm doing, and I told him what happened. And he says, oh, there's a border crossing near Burlington, Vermont. Head for that. There's no border guard there. You just drive straight across. All right. So I do that. I'm heading that way. And I'm almost there. And I'm suddenly so tired I can't keep my eyes open. So I pull over at a rest stop. Take a nap. Except that instead of taking a nap, I woke up and it was the next day. Oh, wow, I was more tired than I thought. So I get in my car. I'm only two hours away, and I drive to the border. And as I cross it, I get pulled over by a border guard. And this guy is telling me his life story. And he searches my car inside and out, top to bottom, and tells me that he's been trying to get this job for three years. And today is his very first day on the job. Hmm. And I'm thinking... God has got a sense of humor. (laughs) Had I done this yesterday, I'd be safely in Canada. Yeah. But because I took a nap that lasted overnight, now I'm stopped at the border. (laughs) So I had $18 and half a tank of gas. So I drove to Burlington, Vermont. When I got there, they told me it was impossible to get a job. But I got a job on my first day. So, and this whole time, I've never gone back to another satanic coven, but I'm addicted to magic and I can't stop. Right. So I'm still doing magic spells every night. So I did a magic spell one night. The next day, I'm the, you know, GM of this piercing pagoda. So I'm working almost every day. And this woman comes up to buy a pair of gold jew earrings. And I present the perfect pair, and we're about to close the deal. And she stops me, and she says, you know, actually, I'm shopping with my daughter, and when I'm done, I'll come back and I'll buy them. And I said, okay, and I smiled, and I, you know, put them back in the case. But then I ended up taking them out of the case because she had an honest face. 
I know that when most women say that, what they mean is, I'm going to go find it cheaper somewhere else. <laughs> but I knew she was telling me the truth. She was coming back. And sure enough, in three hours, she came back. We did the transaction. At the end of the transaction, I said, if you look on this receipt, there's a phone number. If you call that number and take a survey, you might win $1,000. And she goes, that's great. I've got something for you, too. And she reaches in her purse. And I'm thinking, oh, no. She's going to pull out a Jack Chick pamphlet, tell me that I'm sinning, and he dropped to my knees and begged for forgiveness. <laughs> All this stuff that I can't do because I sold my soul to the devil when I was 13. Right. Whatever she pulls out, I'm going to swear I'm going to read it, and I might do what it says. But, you know, the devil is 99% truth and 1% lie. He knows the Bible inside and out. And it's that 1% lie that negates the whole thing. I'm looking at, you know, what is she going to pull out? And now some of these Jack Chick things are like little comic books. Some of them are fun to read. Some of them upset me. I couldn't drop to my knees for any of them. But instead she pulls out this little worthless gold-colored piece of tin. Very cheap. Extremely cheap. Like, you know how thick a Coke can is? Mm -hmm. This was like a tenth of that thickness. Hmm. It was almost like if you held this up to the light, you could see it through it. Hmm. Like, it was cheap. It was thin. And then she says the strangest thing I've ever heard. Now, remember, I used to party with rock stars. You give somebody that can write songs and poetry, unlimited booze and drugs, and they will say some strange stuff. And what she said was more bizarre than that. She said, the Blessed Mother is calling you into her army. And I'm thinking, Blessed Mother, Isis, Gaia? Yeah, I don't know who the Blessed Mother is. I grew up in the Baptist church and then become a Satanist. We don't have titles for the Blessed Mother. And if, you, if she'd have said Mary, the only thing I knew about Mary is that she gave birth to Jesus. She pulls out this little disc and she says, you know, and then she says it's very powerful. Well, Protestants don't bless anything. So this woman's got to represent some female deity cult. I came from two big cults. I'm not interested in hers. There's a chance it could be connected to one of my other cults. Now I'm really not interested. Yeah. And I just kind of tune her out. I'm not listening to anything she's saying, but she's just gabbing away. I mean, just blah, 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 blah. And then after a while, I'm thinking, I've got your money. You've got my gold. This was win-win for both of us. Why haven't you walked away? Yeah. So I tune her back in. And she tells me again it was very powerful. Mm, no. Now I feel like she's challenging me. I was the high wizard. There's between two and five of us in the world. The number could be as low as one or as high as ten. So if I was the only one high wizard out of seven billion people, that's a power trip and a half. And you're trying to tell me this blessed miraculous metal is powerful? No, 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 no. There's no power to this. There's no mystique. This can't do anything to me. This can't touch me. So I stick my hand out for it. And she's all giddy because I'm saying yes. My plans are that I'm going to either slam it on my counter or toss it on my floor. And I'm going to tell her it's worthless. I don't feel anything. And if she gets offended and wants to leave, that's fine. If she wants to get offended and get her money back, that's fine. 
And if she wants to call the regional vice president, I'll give her the number. So these are my plans. I stick my hand out. She drops it in my hand and I clench my fist around it. All ready to tell her these things, except that when I clench my fist around it, my store and my mall completely disappeared. They're gone. I'm standing in a darkened void. My feet are not touching the floor. And this woman tells me about the magic spell I did last night. And that's of the devil. And I've split over a hundred churches. And that's of the devil. And I've committed over a hundred abortions. And that's of the devil. And she tells me about eight or nine other sins. And she ends everything with, and that's of the devil. You know, when I first got here, I was thinking about attacking her with magic. Or at least letting go of the metal. But now I'm thinking, what if I let go and I just fall through this darkened void? What happens if I can't find my way back to the mall? Also, what happens if I attack her? She'll kill me. She might even destroy me. I can't attack her. You know, let's go back to me being the only one high wizard out of 7 billion people. I didn't have the power to give somebody a worthless gold-colored piece of tin, transport both of us to a darkened void, and know all their sins. This woman's magic is stronger than mine, and I was the high wizard. (laughs) And when I realized it was the mother of God, which must have been a grace of the Holy Spirit, Mary appeared to me. It's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And she smiled. And I knew it was a smile I did not deserve. I was acutely aware of my 146 assisted abortions. And she took me by the hand and led me to Jesus. And I'm looking at Divine Mercy Jesus, but I didn't know what Divine Mercy was. I've got these rays of light coming out of Jesus' heart and they're shooting around me and over me and under me and through me. And in that instant, I knew I did not sell my soul to the devil when I was 13. I knew that Jesus Christ was my Lord and Savior. I knew that all my Satanism, my occult, my new age, and my magic was false. And the Blessed Mother told me my job was to help her end abortion. And then I opened my hand and I was in my store back in my mall. So I started All Saints Ministry in 2010. I started giving talks and interviews in 2011. Uh, We have, all speakers have what's called a curriculum vitae, or CV, and it's a resume. It shows all your interviews, all your talks. Mm -hmm. My CV has approximately 23 items per page. And I think I just started page 17. Wow. Wow. I've traveled the world giving my talks. Um, I have a book out and a CD set called Abortion is a Satanic Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of uh, instructional CDs and DVDs. Um, There's a couple of interesting ones. There's Are You Eating from Satan's Shopping Guard? Mm. Where I talk about HEK 293. Ever hear of that? Yes, I have. For, for those of you that haven't, it stands for Human Embryonic Kidneys. 293 was the number of experiment it was. Um, it's aborted baby kidneys. It's, they use the proteins from aborted baby kidneys in scientific experiments. Hmm. Where it became a famous case was a watchdog group that watches where they go when when the place that sells them sells them out to somebody it's public information where they go sure so this watchdog group catches it and they look into it so barack obama well michelle obama did the let's move program when her husband was president you know and she said if you take a child into a room and on one side of the room have fruits and veggies and fruit juice and on the other side of the room you have soda and candy and potato chips the kid is never going to go to the healthy side of the room 
they're always going to go to the unhealthy side of the room. So how about if we change the ingredients of the unhealthy food? So we take out all the trans fat and we take out pretty much everything that makes it taste good comes out. But that's why kids eat it. It's because it tastes good. So then they paired with a company called Cinemix. And Cinemix does flavor enhancers. They can change. They can give you a lump of dirt and have it taste like strawberries. Wow. You could eat anything. And if you had a blindfold on, you may not have any idea what you're eating Hmm. because of their flavor enhancers, Hmm. which they use HEK-293 in. So then Cinemex peered with a bunch of other companies. And they were going to help them change the flavors of their food with their aborted baby kidneys proteins. And the companies they paired with was Ferminich, which is another flavor enhancing company. They also do makeup and vitamins and medicine. Soleil, which does all the soy products in the world, um, and Jinomoto, which supplies 40% of the world's MSG, Kraft, Kraft Foods, Pepsi, Coke, and Nestle, hmm. which if you look up the foods that they do, that's pretty much all the food. Mm-hmm. Now, they also contacted uh, Campbell's Soup. Now, all these companies were all on board. And then this watchdog group contacted all those companies and said, did you know that this company that's contacted you uses HEK-293? Those are aborted baby kidneys, and it's the proteins of that. Now, that doesn't go in the final food product, but it goes in the testing phase and it goes, it's in the experimental phase of all the flavors that they're adding. And so, which company do you think decided that they had morals and they didn't want to be involved? Campbell's Soup. Hmm. Everyone else was totally fine with it. Wow. I got a quick question for you. Um, Sure. So how is it that you're able to, you know, kind of walk freely about the country without any kind of repercussions for what you say or what you do? Do you do you have any, you know, any any of the cult or uh, satanic church coming after you at all? Well, there's a couple of theories about that. Uh, One is that, you know, the person that's hiding under a rock is the devil. If I decide to hide under a rock, he's going to find me first. The place he doesn't want to be is out in the bright sun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to kill me, that's fine. But I'll die a martyr. I get to go straight to heaven for that. Sure. I'm fine with that. But as far as attack goes... I am missing my right foot. I'm blind. I'm diabetic. I'm on dialysis. See, do I have anything else? Seems like I have more wrong with me than that. But I'm pretty joyful for a guy that's got all that going out. Well, it's it's been a great uh, time with you just, you know, hearing your story and allowing you to just, you know, express yourself and, and talk about all of the things that you've been through. We're so grateful and appreciative that you were able to spend the time. And uh, I just I guess my last question would be, how can people find you if they'd like to uh, email you or get a hold of your CDs or anything like that? How could they get a hold of you? Uh, my website is allsaintsministry.org. It's allsaintsministry.org. Okay. Uh, my, my phone number is 802-578-6554. And that's also on my website. 
Well, we're so thankful again that you were able to come on and uh, we just want to end with letting you know that, you know, your story is impactful and powerful Mm -hmm. and you're fighting for, you know, these great causes, which is uh, to end abortion. I mean, who doesn't want that? Uh, really deep down in their heart. I know there's a lot of people out there that, that don't want that because they've been deceived in some way. Right. But I think if people really got down into the heart of the issue and they realized that what you're saying is true, that they would be able to release that uh, as, as an option. I mean, uh, they've got the satanic temple says it's a satanic sacrifice. Yeah. Now, what if you found out that one of your core beliefs that you believe in the depths of your soul is embraced by the satanic temple? Wouldn't that yeah. make you reconsider it? Yeah, you'd think. Yeah, it should. You know, it definitely should. Or the people that wanted to vote for Hillary Clinton when she ran, she was endorsed by the satanic temple. Yeah. Right, right. You'd think that would make people rethink voting for her. Yeah. And she's, uh, yeah, she's going to get hers here pretty soon, I think. But uh, we are out of time. We got to we got to go for this one. But uh, again, thanks for coming on. We look forward yeah, to hopefully you. talking to you again another time. But uh, for all of my thanks friends. For me. Oh, of course, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for all my fringy followers out there. We look forward to our next episode and uh, we hope that you guys all enjoyed this one with that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, review all of those things. So with that, we'll talk to you next time, Zachary. Thank you. And we'll see you later. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye, bud. Bye.